The flocks of these birds of passage are so amazingly great, sometimes that they darken the sky, nor is it uncommon for them to light in such numbers in the larger limbs of mulberry trees and oaks as to break them down. This was written by William Byrd II while leading the efforts to determine the boundary between Virginia and North Carolina in 1728. He was referring to the passenger pigeon. There was once as many as 5 billion in North America, but went extinct by the early 1900s. However, the passenger pigeon isn't the only bird in North America to have gone extinct in relatively recent times. In this video, we'll cover a handful of others, briefly explaining what they were, where they lived, and why they disappeared. But first, I quickly want to thank RareMaps.com for making this video possible by providing many of the high-definition illustrations from the Birds of America by John James Audubon, as well as maps that you'll see in this video. More on them at the end. Now back to the passenger pigeon. It was a sleek, fast-flying bird with a gray-blue back and a pinkish chest. It could reach about 16 inches long and once was the most numerous bird in North America. The passenger pigeon lived in eastern North America, especially the Great Lakes and eastern forests, migrating constantly in massive flocks in search of food. Their main breeding grounds were in southern Ontario and nearby states, and they wintered as far south as Texas and Florida. Massive hunting and widespread habitat destruction led to the extinction of the passenger pigeon. For centuries, their survival strategy depended on overwhelming predators through sheer numbers. However, as humans cleared forests for farmland and hunted the pigeons by the millions, often shooting them by the wagon load, their population dropped sharply. Once their numbers fell below a certain threshold, they could no longer protect themselves or reproduce effectively, and the species collapsed within just a few decades. Some studies suggest that the population naturally fluctuated over time, and that it was already on a downward trend when human activity accelerated their decline. The last one, named Martha, died in captivity in 1914. In the account mentioned earlier, William Byrd added, In their travels, they make vast havoc amongst the acorns and berries of all sorts, that they waste whole forests in a short time, and leave a famine behind them for most other creatures. And under some trees where they light, it is no strange thing to find the ground covered three inches thick with their dung. Our second bird you may be familiar with if you've played Red Dead Redemption. It's the Carolina Parakeet. It was a small, colorful parrot with bright green feathers, a yellow head, and an orange face. It was about 13 inches long, with a long tail and a loud, chattering call. It lived across the eastern and central United States, from southern New York and Wisconsin down to Florida and the Gulf, and west to eastern Colorado. It favored old forests along rivers and swamps, especially in the Mississippi-Missouri Basin, roosting and nesting in hollow cypress and sycamore trees, but its population was densest in Florida. We aren't completely sure why the Carolina parakeet went extinct. We aren't even completely sure how many there were. Estimates vary from tens of thousands to a few million. It's unlikely they were overhunted for food, since one of their main food sources, cocklebur, is highly toxic making the birds themselves poisonous. Their extinction was likely due to a combination of habitat loss, hunting for their colorful feathers, which were popular in hats, and diseases introduced by domestic poultry. The last confirmed Carolina parakeet died in captivity in 1918, in the very same cage where the last passenger pigeon had died just four years earlier. The Labrador duck was a small black and white sea duck with a broad, flattened bill adapted for eating shellfish. Males had darker plumage, while females were more grayish. It bred along the coast of Labrador and wintered along the eastern United States, especially around Long Island, New York. The species was always rare, but between 1850 and 1870, its numbers dropped further. It wasn't heavily hunted because it tasted bad and spoiled quickly, but its eggs may have been over-harvested, and the feather trade may have affected breeding areas. More importantly, Coastal development and industrial growth likely caused a decline in shellfish, its main food source. As the only sea duck limited to the northern American Atlantic coast, it struggled to adapt. It was last seen in Canada in 1874 and declared extinct by 1875. The great auk was a large flightless seabird about 30 to 33 inches tall and weighing around 11 pounds. With black and white plumage, a heavy hooked beak, and short wings it used for powerful swimming underwater. Although it resembled modern penguins, it was not closely related. 
Penguins were actually named after the great auk because of their similar appearance. It lived in the cold North Atlantic, breeding on remote rocky islands off Canada, Greenland, Iceland, and Northern Europe, and foraging as far south as Northern Spain. It preferred isolated islands with easy access to rich fishing grounds and nested in dense, noisy colonies, laying a single egg directly on bare rock. The great auk was hunted heavily for meat, feathers, oil, and bait. As breeding islands became more accessible and demand for specimens grew, hunters wiped out entire colonies. Laws were passed to protect them, but they were too late. The last confirmed pair was killed in Iceland in 1844, ending the species. A possible sighting off Newfoundland in 1852 is sometimes considered the final record. The heath hen was a large ground-dwelling bird about 17 inches long and weighing around 2 pounds. It looks similar to the greater prairie chicken, but the heath hen was slightly smaller, darker, and had heavier barring with a reddish tint around the throat. Males had pointed feathers that they raised during their courtship displays. Heath hens lived in the scrubby coastal barrens from southern New Hampshire to Virginia. They were extremely common in colonial times, so much so that they earned a reputation as poor man's food, and servants sometimes negotiated not to be fed heath hen more than a few times a week. It's also believed by some that heath hens, not wild turkeys, may have been eaten at the first Thanksgiving. Heavy hunting, habitat loss, and introduced predators like feral cats caused their numbers to plummet by the early 1800s. By 1870, they survived only on Martha's Vineyard. A fire in 1916, a harsh winter, disease, and an imbalance of males to females doomed the last population. The final known heath hen was last seen in 1932. The dusky seaside sparrow was a small dark colored sparrow with a blackish back and heavy streaking. Different from other seaside sparrows by its darker plumage and buzzy insect-like song. It lived primarily in the salt marshes of Merritt Island and along the St. Johns River in Florida, isolated from other seaside sparrows. Its population fell sharply after habitat loss from mosquito controlled flooding near Kennedy Space Center pesticide use, and marsh draining for development. By the late 1970s, only a few males remained. Attempts to save the subspecies by crossbreeding with related sparrows failed. The last known pure dusky sparrow died at Walt Disney World's Discovery Island in 1987. Its organs were preserved in case future science could one day revive the bird. A few other birds that are likely extinct but still debated include the Eskimo curlew, a small migratory shorebird that once bred in Arctic Canada and Alaska and migrated through the Great Plains to South America. The ivory-billed woodpecker, a large woodpecker with striking black and white plumage once found in the swamps and forests of the southeastern United States and Cuba. The Bachman's warbler, a tiny yellow and greenish songbird that lived in the swampy forests of the southeastern United States, especially South Carolina and Louisiana. These birds, once woven into the daily life and landscape of Northern America, now exist only in natural history museums, artwork, and written records. Their stories remind us how quickly even the most abundant species can vanish, often due to human impact. Thanks again RareMaps.com for sponsoring this video. If you've seen my old map videos, you know they're an online map shop, but they also have tons of other historical documents, photographs, and illustrations including the birds of America, as you saw in this video. They even have original drawings of the Statue of Liberty. They have over 10,000 items in their inventory, so it's nearly impossible not to find something to add to your collection within your budget. And they are constantly adding more to their inventory, so even if you don't, they will likely have what you're looking for in the future. Again, that's raremaps.com. And that's all for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.